My understanding of the facts is as follows. Mr. and Mrs. Smith are married. Mr. is a home tad and runs a small earth moving business. The business is a modest operation but it is a business. Mrs. is an IT consultant. She is on a high income and all her income comes from one large contract. Mrs. Smith does not pass the PSI rules. She pays tax on her income in her own name. Mr. and Mrs. Smith are of the opinion that if they form a trust or a company and then both deposit and bill their respective incomes through the trust or company they will be able to split income. This is so because the PSI rules will no longer apply. In responding to this question I am going to assume you are familiar with the PSI rules. By this I mean I do not intend going over the tests that apply to determine what PSI income is. Moreover, I will further assume you are familiar with the results test and the concept of the unrelated client, employment and business premises tests. The question to be answered is as follows. Mr. and Mrs. Smith have formed a trust and intend to deposit and bill their respective incomes through the trust. Will they now be able to split income because the PSI rules will no longer apply? Addressing this question requires a discussion of two differing aspects of taxation law. Division 84, 86 of the Income Tax Assessment Act 1997, the PSI Rules and Part 4A of the Income Tax Assessment Act 1936, better known as the Tax Avoidance Rules. Section 84 Subsection 5 of the PSI Rules states that a taxpayer's ordinary income or statutory income or the ordinary income or statutory income of any other entity, is your personal services income. If the income is mainly a reward for your personal efforts or skills, or would mainly be such a reward if it was your income. In other words Mrs. Smith's income is still PSI. Billing through the trust does not change this fact. As Mrs. Smith does not derive income in her own name, but through the family trust, the issue is how will the tax law apply to the income of the trust? What we are now trying to do is to find whether the trust's income is PSI. We know Mrs. Smith's income is PSI and the trust does not change this. Nevertheless, we need to ask the question from the trust's perspective. 75% test. The first cab off the rank is the results test. As mentioned earlier I assume you are familiar with the test. An individual or a personal services entity satisfies the results test in an income year. If, in relation to at least 75% of the entity's PSI during the income year, the income is for producing a result. The individual or entity is required to supply the plant, equipment or tools necessary to perform the work. And, the individual or entity is liable for the cost of rectifying any defective work. The critical issue is the term, in relation to at least 75% of the entity's PSI. The 75% rule is asking you to examine a trust's PSI income. Mr. Smith's earth moving income is not PSI, therefore his income does not form part of the 75% test. Only Mrs. Smith's income is counted. Per your advice Mrs. Smith's income fails the results test. Moreover, as discussed, the trust on its own does not alter the nature of Mrs. Smith's PSI as a result in relation to 75% of the trust's PSI income the results test is not passed. The trust's income is PSI unless it applies to the ATO for an exemption. This is so because it fails the results test in the 80% rule. You need to be aware that the general anti-avoidance rules in Part 4A of the tax law can apply where PSI is earned through a company, 
trust or partnership or the taxpayer is carrying on a PSI business. Arrangements that would attract the provisions of Part 4 include if PSI is alienated and taxed at a lower rate than if it had been received by the individual, splitting income with an associated person, any payments for services or salary related to the earning of PSI should be commensurate with the duties, responsibilities or value of services provided, and retention of profits in the company. The anti-avoidance provisions are often overlooked. Note. What the ATO is saying is that even if a taxpayer is a PSB it will, in certain circumstances, act to disallow income splitting, on the basis that Mr. and Mrs. Smith will use their trust arrangement to split income and substantially reduce tax they are at risk from Part 4 a irrespective of whether the PSI rules are passed or otherwise. For further information on what is a personal services business refer to Taxation Ruling TR 2001-8. No the ATO makes it quite clear that Part 4A may still apply to entities conducting a personal services business, PSB, if the dominant purpose of the relevant arrangement was to obtain a tax benefit. General Conclusion Mr. and Mrs. Smith should not attempt to split income. There are major tax risks in doing so.